up. I'm Sarah Hartman. Uh, I'm faculty here at MassArt. I specialize in um, business and entrepreneurship in creative industries, and I run our student business incubator as well as some of our programming um, around professional development and support for arts business and arts entrepreneurship. Uh, I've got a short uh, presentation to walk everyone through tonight outlining some opportunities and resources that are here for you to take advantage of um, you know during your time as a student. Uh, and after that I'll um, be able to take some questions but it's great to see, everyone here and taking an interest in this, um, in part because I don't know if any of you know this, it's not the best publicized statistic in the world, but there's an organization called SNAP, the Strategic National Arts Alumni Project, and they track career outcomes of people who study um, any field in art and design um, in North America, and they've tracked out career outcomes of arts alumni for years. One of the things that they found, um, and this is through a really massive data set, so it's a um, very legitimate statistical finding, is that students who have access to arts and entrepreneurship education as a part of their art degree are twice as likely uh, 10 years down the road into their career to report satisfaction with the work that they're doing in their career development and 2.1, so a little more than twice as likely, um, to report that they are satisfied with uh, the, fin the financial outcomes of their career. So a few business classes are a little bit of business and entrepreneurship um, that you engage with in your time as a student pays off in dividends as you move into your career as a creative professional. And I know we're past ad drop, so um, and if you're thinking, well, what am I gonna hear about tonight? It's too late to change my schedule this semester. Um, I've got several exciting resources and opportunities for people to take advantage of that are um, happening and available now and a few things to put on your radar for future semesters. So let me just share my screen. There we go. All right, everyone can see this? Yes. Awesome. So uh, the one of the exciting things I have to share with you is we, this um, current year, have more resources available for students interested in business and entrepreneurship at MassArt than we ever have had before. Um, first, um, oh, just to give you a, a quick overview of all of the resources we're going to talk about tonight, uh, we've got creative economy workshops that are starting next month and free to attend for everyone. Peer hire grants, a way for you to get paid to work with your classmates um, this year. Uh, we have a new student run enterprise that's really exciting. We're getting off the ground this year. We have our creative economy business incubator where students can go to um, launch or grow their own businesses. Uh, we have business electives, um, just a series of electives um, that are focused on uh, topical issues within business or connected to um, arts entrepreneurship. And then finally, for the first time this year, um, next month, we're going to be announcing some entrepreneurs in residence that you as a student at MassArt are going to have access to for um, class visits or one-on-one -on -one office hours. But first up, because, you know, you're some of the first to know about it. Uh, our Creative Economy Workshop Series is coming back. Uh, this is a series of professional development free workshops that we've been producing in partnership with the City of Boston um, Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture for the last four years. And in these workshops, we bring in um, really accomplished creative professionals, people who are working at the intersection of arts and business in all different ways, to lead um, useful, fun, and actionable talks around how you can better understand um, maybe a certain part of creative industries, something like uh, NFTs or what it's like to be an Etsy super seller. Or um, we have some coming in to give general talks around how to create a brand identity for your creative business or practice. Uh, how um, we have one coming up that's already popular um, on how to master the art of selling at art markets and pop-ups. So 
This fall, we're going to have a series of three free um, creative economy workshops. Uh, they, I've got a link to register here. They're on MassArt's Eventbrite. They should be coming up on the MassArt calendar um, shortly, but these workshops will all be um, actually this time now. So I know <laughs> Thursday evenings are not a non-starter for this group. So Thursday evenings from seven to eight, we've got a series of really wonderful and exciting professionals coming to give uh, talks um, on topics related to branding. We have Branding for Creative Business with MassArt alum, Sarah Gudek, who is a um, veteran of the ad industry who left to launch her own successful creative venture. Uh, we have Mastering Art Markets and Pop-Ups with um, a successful retail business, um, business owner, Jen Palacio, who also organizes a lot of art markets in the Boston area. And then really exciting, we've got a um, professional calling in from the, uh, the West Coast, uh, Latasha Ewell, who's a creative director at Masterclass, is going to be joining us to give a talk about storytelling and creating story, um, compelling stories about your brand or um, your personal brand and creative work. Then coming up in January, while everyone's on winter break, we're going to have a series that I'm really excited about on money and well-being. So everything from confronting fears and anxieties about money to what does it mean to do your taxes as an artist. Anyone who would like to register for these workshops, again, they are all completely free. You can find a shortcut at massart.edu backslash workshops. Now, the next thing, maybe the one that's most excited um, for some of you here tonight, because it involves getting paid, is our peer collaboration grants. So um, later I'm gonna talk about our Creative Economy Business Incubator, a um, class and program where students and alumni come together to launch creative businesses or to take maybe a creative side hustle that they have and scale it to something that could be a full-time venture. And one of the exciting things that's happened in this program in the past is we've had really incredible collaborations. Um, this picture's from a collaboration that happened two years ago. Uh, Ernie Jubin, who is a fashion alum starting his own clothing line, uh, worked with uh, Claudio Eschen, who was a um, photo MFA alum um, starting a uh, commercial photography studio in the incubator. And they worked together on the um, images and both editorial photo shoot and product images for the website for Ernie's clothing line that he was launching. And you know, we've seen a lot of other cool collaborations like that. Of course, this one has the best images, which is why I'm sharing it with uh, you as the example. But in the past, it's always been informal, right? The kinds of collaborations are um, based on the luck of you know, who the student founding the business happens to know. This year we have uh, funding to support these collaborations. So the way peer collaboration grants work is a student in the business incubator who has a business they're trying to launch and maybe they need help with something that's outside their discipline, whether it's branding design, photography, help in product development. I mean, really anything that any of you do could be a critical skill for a student trying to launch a business in the incubator. Um, you can team up with them for a collaboration. You would be paid $500 or up to $500, depending on the uh, scope of work that you propose um, for your work on the collaboration. And there's also budget for up to $200 for materials to support their projects. So the great thing about this, of course, is that you get some money, um, you get a job for your portfolio, for your resume, and the student business in question gets um, the value of additional expertise that somebody else is um, bringing, right? It lets them tap into talent that may not necessarily be in their uh, immediate purview. So the peer collaboration grants are happening this year. If you're interested in participating, there is, um, a, a form linked in the slideshow, and that's reminding me, uh, I know we're going to be sharing a link to this video afterwards, so Mary Ellen or Meg, can I share links to the form as well? Sure. Awesome. All right. <laughs> so I will share both this presentation and um, the link. You'll also see signs up around school about this in um, the 
coming week. Uh, so in order to participate, you would just need to submit contact information um, via a sh very short Google form that includes your name, your major, how to reach you, and a few images from Instagram or portfolio site of your work. Um, incubator students will reach out to you directly, um, trying to find people to collaborate with. You and your incubator collaborator um, would submit a joint request for funding, and these will be reviewed on a rolling basis for the first half of the spring semester. Funded projects will be paid out at the conclusion of the project, so once um, the project is complete, but uh, we can do advances for materials. So I'm hoping that we get a big pool of students coming together to produce uh, some really out, um, outstanding and exciting collaborations this year. Next, another way for you to get experience, um, you know, professional experience on campus is we are launching at MassArt coming this May, a student-run business. This is exciting for a lot of reasons, um, but not the least of which is that MassArt is um, the first art school to open a business of this variety, and we are the only art school to be a member of the Student Run Business Association, um, which is um, you know, a industry group of um, that includes things like the student agencies at Harvard, student businesses at Stanford, so it's a really exciting uh, student group to be a part of, but most importantly, with the student-run business, you'll have a chance to learn about business, not through studying in a lecture, but through practicing it in real time for class credit, working both on um, developing and producing products and creating marketing plans, managing a website, running ad campaigns. So there are so many different skills and practices that go into running a business and all of them are going to be included in this new program. So there are two courses associated with the student run business. Um, uh, there are, there's a marketing course that's happening now. There'll be a product development course next, um, coming up this spring. Uh, but some of the important characteristics of this program are that this is a business we're creating that will be an ongoing business run by the college, rather though than having the profits go to the college that maintains it, they're all gonna go to support scholarships and student programs. So everything um, that all the proceeds generated by this business are gonna go right back into supporting um, activities, funds, scholarships for students like you. Uh, the students this year working in the business are gonna be working towards launching. So right now in the marketing pilot, students are doing research, creating a brand identity, and they get to do some fun uh, one-time stuff like name the business, come up with um, the first proposal for what the brand identity will be. Um, all of these classes uh, emphasize interdisciplinary teamwork, and we're going to be joined regularly by visiting professionals um, from the ad industry, from the apparel industry, uh, we've got a really exciting roster of speakers coming to work with students and to critique their work this semester. Of course, you may be wondering, what will this business do, right? Um, so I'm sure a lot of you know sites like Society6 or Redbubble that print um, any artist's work on products. This is a similar concept in that we're starting with products that are print on demand, but rather than going through a marketplace site, we are working with wholesale manufacturers um, who will produce student work on demand and ship it directly to customers under the student-run brand's identity. So students will be involved in all steps of uh, designing, prototyping, and merchandising a product line and with managing um, the e-commerce sales uh, and the uh, both digital and in-person promotion of the product. But not with packing and shipping the boxes, the least exciting part. So anyone who's interested in participating in this student-run business course, um, like I said, marketing is happening right now in the fall, but I have to be honest, I think the most fun class in this is gonna be Design for Consumers taught by Kenlyn Jones um, on Monday afternoons this spring. And that's gonna be the class where students are creating the actual product line, evaluating samples, and then producing the photo shoots that are gonna be used in all of the advertising for this student brand. 
And you know, we're really working on designing these courses to function less like a course and more like a part-time job. The goal being that um, it can be closer to an on-campus internship, practicing your skills for industry rather than um, you know, a traditional part-time job or course, right? It's doing industry work and developing pieces for your portfolio and points for your resume. All right. Next up, and this is usually the program I get the most questions about and the most interest in. Uh, so we are currently in our third year of the Creative Business Incubator. This is a year-long program for students and alumni who are launching and growing creative businesses. So we see everything from students with an app idea that they want to develop or an Etsy side hustle that they want to scale and make it to a full-time business. Uh, we have students who um, are starting stores, starting clothing lines, starting nonprofits, starting magazines. And the exciting thing is in every cohort, we've had a few really great success stories of students who um, either take their side hustle and double and triple their business and formalize it over the course of the year, or students who come in um, with just an idea that have a um, working prototype up by the end of the year. So Earn, the collaboration between Ernie and Claude that I shared a few slides back was one of them. Um, Ernie came in with his clothing line as a really part-time side hustle, meaning he would sew a few things and then he would get busy and be sold out all the time. And he's now got um, a growing e-commerce business based out of Worcester. You know, we've had students come in with maybe a ceramics brand that they're mostly selling at art markets. And by the end of the semester, they're wholesaling to um, handfuls of stores in the area. So some really exciting uh, growth has happened, but you don't have to have a business already running in order to join the incubator. It's also a great place to take an idea that you've had in the back of your head and give yourself the time to explore it and see where it could go. So the incubator is a class where students launch businesses in real time. This year, we're meeting on Mondays. Um, it meets for the whole year. And it's a really exciting combined cohort because in this class, we have undergrads, we have grad students, we have certificate students. And then we also have a fellowship that brings five alumni back every year who are starting businesses to um, focus on the businesses they're launching after graduation in the incubator. And for the first time this year, we've partnered with the city of Boston and have a cohort of 12 um, artists and creative business founders who are just full-time professional artists working and living in the city of Boston. So uh, we've got this big group, 36 entrepreneurs working together this year to launch businesses. That's a lot of potential clients for you if you're planning to participate in the peer hire grants. Um, but for some of you, it may be more that this is um, something that you're interested in doing in you know, your junior or senior year here at MassArt or as a part of your uh, graduate studies. So who is this for? Just the types of entrepreneurs we see. Uh, side hustlers, if you've got a side gig, an Etsy store, something that you want to grow. Aspiring entrepreneurs, so someone who's got an idea that they love but doesn't know where to start. Uh, it, but it's also for serious solo practitioners, people who are planning to have a solo practice as an artist but intend to take it serious, seriously and treat it like a real business and with that want to have a business plan to go along with it. The one thing it's not for is passive learning. So it's not the best class um, if you're just curious about entrepreneurship and aren't sure um, if it's for you or not or what you'd like to do. There are other classes for that course. And I do just want to call attention to the image on the side, another one of our incubator success stories. Uh, Jennifer Wolf was a senior in fashion when she participated two years ago with the idea of doing a size inclusive denim line. She ran a successful Kickstarter campaign to fund the launch of her business. And the first batch of her jeans um, just shipped from the factory last week. I just got mine. I'm very excited. Uh, so another case where you know a student came in, she got coaching from alums, she got help with factories and went from a concept on paper to a fully manufactured product. 
So when I talk about the incubator, of course, it's a class. Students who are current students do receive credit for it, but it's not simply a class where you come just to uh, read a few books, hear some lectures. There are a lot of resources associated with it as well. Um, throughout the year, we have frequent small group critiques with visiting professionals. So based on the types of projects people are working on, we have a uh, rotating and always growing and expanding group of professionals, both people working at senior and executive levels in different industries, uh, successful arts-based entrepreneurs who have built thriving businesses on their own, all coming in to critique and give advice um, to students on different aspects of their business. So a regular part of it is getting professional feedback and not simply peer and faculty feedback. Um, we have visiting experts that give talks to the whole groups, host studio visits and field trips, and those tend to be curated based on the needs and the focus of the cohort. We get manufacturing support from Makers Row, which is a platform that matches students and entrepreneurs with American factories that are willing to work with small businesses and produce in small batches. For anyone who's ever been down to SOA, the arts market, we also have a sponsored booth space where student businesses can set up and sell for free to put their products or their businesses in front of consumers. And then finally, this year, probably the most exciting one for all of you who've been reading ahead of me, uh, we will have a grant competition for students um, in the incubator and we'll be giving several grants of up to $5,000 to support general operating funds and uh, startup funds for some of our student ventures. And of course, if all this sounds great, but the incubator's not for you and maybe um, the student-run business feels like a daunting place to start, we have a range of other business electives that I always point people to. Strategy for Creative Business serves as MassArt's sort of intro to create um, to business equivalent course. So this is where we learn the basics of business competitive theory and look at the ways that creativity can be a source of competitive advantage, both for you and your career and for organizations that value the creativity of their employees. Uh, you know, I'm sure many of you will take or will try to take because it's always full. Uh, Mary Ellen's class, Financial Literacy and Careers, available every fall. Um, in SIM, they offer Art, Life, and Money, which is a look at sort of the financial, operational, and personal aspects of what it means to be a working artist. And in the spring, we have Mass Maker Studio, which is focused on developing and prototyping innovative products and looking at sort of at high growth economies. Um, just this year, they have a product that was developed last spring in that class that is going into use in production at Mass General Hospital. Like they, in the class, invented a special kind of warming bed for premature babies that hospitals are adopting. So they make some really cool stuff in that class. And um, finally, we have Intro to Entrepreneurship, which is a place to come if you want to explore and aren't sure where to start, but just want to learn a little bit more about entrepreneurship and whether it's for you. So with that, I'm going to stop my share. I know anyone who's been taking notes and paying close attention will notice that I also mentioned entrepreneurs and residents, and they are not on this slide yet. Um, so in October, I, the reason I'm not announcing who they are is because they're um, are still two that I'm working out scheduling and details with that will go in the announcement, but uh, we have some really exciting, um, successful entrepreneurs that we've invited to be a presence on campus this semester. They're going to be sitting in uh, both in the incubator, helping coach and work with students in the incubator, but they will also be holding open office hours where they're available for any student who's interested in their business, wants to ask questions about their career, what it's like to be a creative entrepreneur, all of the above. Um, so I can tell you um, right now, three of them anyway, we've got um, Elizabeth McGarry, who is a athletic and footwear industry consultant. That's helped, she's helped to launch just about every successful um, indie athletic and apparel brand here in the Boston area, everything from John G to Tracksmith, um, 
Takata, and then she does, she consults on a lot of the cooler sort of indie-esque products um, and sublines for brands like Cotopaxi, um, comes from Nike. So really cool entrepreneur and innovator in the footwear space, a great space to be in Boston, the footwear capital of the country. Uh, we have Queen Alate Papo, who is a um, an alum of the Mass Art Certificate Program, who started a sustainable clothing line using uh, textiles from, and uh, traditional designs and fabrics, inspiration from Ghana. And uh, she's got her work featured and carried in the Peabody Essex Museum, a number of um, boutiques from Boston. And if any of your parents like to watch Chronicle when you're home visiting them, you might have seen Queen featured there. So she'll be on campus regularly. She's been a visitor in the past and she's always a student favorite. And then for particularly our, our fine artists, we've got Rusty and Ingrid Kanunen, who are both mass art alums, both painting majors who run a really successful um, fine art based um, painting and printmaking based business in Rockport, Massachusetts that will um, be on campus to tell their story and help, um, I think, you know, it's easy with entrepreneurship to bring in designers who have started brands, right? But I'm excited to bring in fine artists who have created a business that's not just a successful practice for themselves, but a big company that employs a whole lot of other artists as well. So those are the three I can tell you about now. They'll all be holding open office hours that any student can take advantage of. And um, I will, when I have the office hours schedule available for sign up, I will be sh um, sharing it with Mary Ellen and we'll work on a way to get access to that for everyone. So with that, um, I would just like to open it up. I know I just dumped a whole lot of information on you. Um, I will be sharing the forms, the slides, and I'm happy to answer any questions that um, anyone has. Hi, Marietta. Yes, Marietta. Hey. <laughs> Sarah, I have a question. Are the um, uh, creative economy business workshops open to alums as well? Yes, they are open to everyone. Students, alums, uh, general public. Great, awesome. Do you find that most of the students who um, take the course are in their junior or senior year? Do you have sophomores who join? Yeah, um, so the only students who can't take the incubator are freshmen. It's not, um, the, the two semester requirements not compatible with um, freshman year requirements. In general, when students ask, I do try to gently encourage them to think about doing the incubator closer to graduation in the junior or senior year, because the idea is not to make a business plan, it's to start a business and running a business while you're a full-time student. I don't want to say um, don't do it, because I know some of you probably already are, um, but uh, it's, um, I recommend taking the incubator later, if you're thinking about taking it later in your time here, um, not just because of the demands of running a business you may choose to start, but because uh, you'll make a lot of connections through the incubator. It's a really busy result, a revolving door of cool and exciting professionals. I have had students hired by their mentors or <laughs> people who stop in to review them and then say, hey, is it cool if I actually offer this person a job? I liked what I saw. So um, it's that's the kind of thing that it's better to focus on closer to the end of your career as a student as uh, part of your transition out of school and in, into the next stage. Are there other courses that you would recommend for like their sophomore junior year? Absolutely. So strategy is um, a great class to start with. It's not um, at first glance, maybe the most exciting looking course, right? To take a strategy class um, versus going right to launching your own business. But um, I have found that the students who take strategy or um, intro to entrepreneurship before jumping into the incubator usually have a um, better sense of what they're getting into. And strategy is a lot of fun, right? Um, like just yesterday, my strategy class, uh, we did a 
uh, zombie apocalypse simulation as a leadership training <laughs> to navigate through um, uncertain territory. But um, for anyone who's ever had some discomfort around the idea of business or the way certain businesses behave, uh, we take a deep dive in that class into exploring um, business ethics and the negative impact on the world and on society that business has um, using ethics um, almost as a proxy or placeholder for creative vision, because both with eth moral values and creative vision, sometimes there's something you believe firmly in that um, could appear to be at odds with the fastest, um, least creative way to make a quick buck. And uh, so, you know, and as, as artists, I think you tend to be uh, empathetic people with morals that you want to apply to the way you see businesses. So um, I would say it's a really lively class that um, teaches you to see business in a different way, but also to um, interrogate business effectively and ask informed questions and challenge the way you see business being done. All right. Um, our so Tara asks, are students paid if they participate in the student-run business at MassArt? Or is it more of a learning experience? So it's both. Um, participating in the class is a learning experience. Like we're trying to set it up like it's a um, on-campus internship, right? So learning marketing, learning product development through practice. Um, there'll be more that I can tell you coming soon, but yes, there will be some paid opportunities as well for student leaders um, to help manage and run this business outside of what gets done in the classroom. Uh, let's see, uh, Marietta and then Gail. Hello, everyone. I was just going to say I really appreciate these lectures. Um, I took Sarah's uh, Entrepreneurship for Creative Business uh, last semester in my senior year. Um, I should have definitely uh, started with that as soon as I could in sophomore year because I think that would have opened up my perspective in, in how I can share my artwork and really like my like basically like pushing my limits and my boundaries and my comfortability level with, with um, yeah, just being, just owning my artwork. So I just appreciate that there's lectures outside of the classes that I can continue to learn and, and continue to express and, and advise others to start as early as possible to be learning about entrepreneurship because that has liberated me in so many ways. So just wanna share appreciation. Oh, thank you so much. And then I don't know if you were here earlier, but that storytelling workshop that's coming up in November on my list of things to do today was to email you um, about it and remind you to set up because you will love the speaker. You two would vibe. All right. Thank you. All right. And Gail. For the um, business entrepreneurship uh, class, is it more beneficial to things like starting like a maker's business or ideas such as like paint bars and like more like storefront like physical businesses can they also benefit from taking this class oh absolutely um i would say uh brick and mortar concepts and uh, maker product concepts are probably the two types of businesses i see the most frequently but um my philosophy with all the classes and programs is to try to be um, industry agnostic and scale agnostic. Um, you know, in my own career, which I didn't give my whole elevator pitch because it's too long, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm a mass art alum. I went to business school later and I spent some time on the periphery of Boston's startup scene and innovation economy. And I was always, you know, the um, blue duck at the end of the row. I didn't make any sense there because um, I worked in creative industries and nothing I was passionate about, nothing I was working on uh, was, you know, destined to be the next multi-billion dollar business, right? That was just never the goal. And, you know, part of, you know, the vision for the business programming that we're building out and growing at MassArt is to create a space that services businesses um, based on creativity without any bias towards small versus large business, towards one industry versus another, towards nonprofit versus for-profit, that 
Um, I think, especially as students, the stage where you're at is, you know, it's about recognizing that an entrepreneurial toolkit will give you more options um, for how your work finds its way into the world. And probably anyone who really engages with that process as a student will explore multiple um, modalities for doing that. And that the business idea that you end up with might be really different from the one you started with. So that's a really long answer <laughs> to the brick and mortar question, but um, you know, absolutely that um, place-based businesses, um, and I've seen a real uptick in interest in that, I think post-COVID too, we all value place more. Um, and, and then just one last thing I would say is in terms of the types of speakers and experts that we bring in and the content that we curate, part of that is informed by seeing what students are working on, right? So two years ago, um, there was a like really big contingent of fashion brands, right? So we had more speakers and experts from fashion industries because that's where a lot of students were going. And not all that was for the whole class, you know, we would, or for whole groups, like I try to organize a lot of breakout sessions and smaller mastermind groups, but um, yeah, this year in particular, it's interesting. You asked, there's, uh, I think, a big shift towards place as a vehicle for community that I, I think a lot of people have hit their limits with um, virtual communities right now. No, that definitely answers my question. And then is that, does the incubator run both, like when do, when do you apply for the So it's, um, it runs fall to spring. Ring. Um, so it's to the incubator is two courses. So um, like you start in the fall um, and do the fall and then the spring. Uh, but um, I would say in terms of things um, to think about taking in the spring, there's intro to entrepreneurship um, strategy. I can't plug enough. I know I just did. Uh, and um, the design for consumers class, I think is going to be a really fun window into running a business from a completely different angle. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And then to the question, Naomi asked, are there any business classes that I can take in my spring semester or freshman year? Yes, absolutely. Anything but the incubator you can do as a freshman. Uh, so I've got a couple of freshmen in um, strategy right now, I usually have at least one or two freshmen in intro to entrepreneurship. I think it's um, freshman year is a great time, right? The business classes are kind of removed from the progression of courses within your discipline. So um, taking one earlier might open up new ideas or change the things that you decide to pursue sort of throughout your time here. Um, put the name of the course for fall and spring. Um, uh, which course for fall and spring? Sorry. Oh, um, hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi. I'm new here, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I just saw last night your events. Uh, so I was curious about, uh, and also interested to take part of this course online, uh, this event online. So um, you said you uh, mentioned about the uh, course, for, or I don't know, the events for fall or spring. So that's just, I wanted to know about the exact name of that. I mean, I, if I want to register for that or like that. So oh, yeah. for, the, um, for, for the, the workshops? Yeah, or workshops. Yes, absolutely. So I'll put right in chat. Um, Thank you. So this is the shortcut to um, the workshops. There are three published right now uh, in mid-October. We're going to be publishing the dates and registration for the Money and Wellbeing mini-series. And it's going to be great. We're going to have, um, if anyone follows Hannah Cole, she's the nation's like leading expert on the very niche subject of taxes for artists. So she'll be giving talks on artist taxes, money mindset, um, we've got uh, Jesse Rosinski um, coming to give a talk on um, inner self-care, you know, like taking care of yourself while running a creative practice, and uh, Tron Vu, who um, has sort of a uh, strategy for artists um, practice and series of workshops that she does. We'll be talking about 
um, planning for your creative business during a period of crisis, which we're always in crisis these days. Yeah, that's so, so Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? Um. Oh, Tara, so where can I apply or put myself out there for peer collaboration with those in the incubator? Um, so Tara, the email following this up is going to have a um, link to the form. And, I, and actually, if you hold on one minute, I can just put it in chat. That's the faster way. Apologies. I meant to have that preloaded to paste before we started and I did not. So this link will take you to the whole slideshow I just shared. Within the slideshow, there's a link to the Google form. I will also be posting um, signs around campus. So those lovely signs that you see by the elevator and tower and in Kennedy, um, maybe that's how you found this talk tonight. Um, there uh, will be signs posted with the link to submit. And it's really simple, just your name, your contact information, um, and uh, a link to your Instagram or someplace where you're you're showing your work online. And I'll be sharing the database of everyone who puts their contact information in with both current incubator participants and participants from past cohorts. And uh, they'll be taking the initiative to reach out to potential collaborators on their own. They will be entrepreneurial about it. Sounds good. Well, I think it's close to eight. You should all go eat supper or do your homework or <laughs> whatever you do on a cold and rainy, or maybe not a, a warm and rainy Thursday night. But thank you so much um, for joining for this talk. Um, I'm Sarah Hartman. If you're in the MassArt email, you can find me. My office is um, Tower 643. I'm around on campus Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Always happy to talk shop, answer questions, and help you think about what parts of business or entrepreneurship are interesting or uh, meaningful to your arts education. And I would like to thank Sarah um, as well. My name is Mary Ellen Schroeder. I'm the Director of Career Development. And Meg, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Meg Gatterman, the Student Outreach Manager at Career Development. And a Mass Art alum as well. Yep. <laughs> and um, I am the one, as Sarah had mentioned, I co-teach the class called Financial Literacy and Careers. It was one of the other um, business courses that was mentioned. It's actually happening this fall semester and will be offered again next fall semester. So if you have any questions about that class, um, I'd be happy to answer them as well. So I just wanna say thank you so much, Sarah, for offering this information. It's so exciting obviously dovetails with the work that we do in career development, and we will be promoting these opportunities for you as well. So thank you for coming. Thank you for setting this up. And thank you all of you for um, turning out tonight. I hope I see you in person in the classroom at one of our events real soon. All right. Thanks so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.